and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to the Gay State of the Union. I'm Andy Hum. <laughs> Not quite. I'm Ann Northrup. Uh, and yeah, it was a lot of big news this week, uh, including the fact that, folks, we're going to the Supreme Court again. And this is all about whether or not we can achieve a national right to same-sex marriage. President Obama did give his State of the Union speech this week, and there were some references to the LGBT community. We'll repeat those in case you missed them. Uh, there's another big cake controversy in Colorado, and uh, some would say the shoe is on the other foot. We will discuss. Actually, I think the big headline of the week is that Lindsey Graham is running for president. <laughs> Why would that be on a gay show? Well, because it... <laughs> It shows us we've reached the millennium. <laughs> okay. Discuss more later. Meanwhile, the Pope is calling gay marriage a threat, which means we'll have to go talk to him when he comes to New York and D.C. and Philadelphia. Uh, Thailand is looking to protect a third gender in its constitution. Chile is close to legalizing civil unions for both uh, same-sex and straight couples. And Billy Crystal says gay themes are going too far. Coach Beast came out on Glee. We'll show you that. And I'll review Constellations on Broadway with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ruth Wilson. But we start with the President of the United States. Sure. I watched his speech. Uh, we're taping this on uh, the, the day afterwards. And I have to say, last night, and, uh, you know, I, I hate the State of the Union, I think it's just a farce with all the clapping and the standing up and all that kind of stuff. But he really drew me in. I think he gave a terrific speech and he made some history for us. Well, he did give a terrific speech. Unfortunately, it may be meaningless in the way politics actually plays out. Mostly, I think it's targeted to the election coming up in 2016. Will the public buy into his vision or into the vision of the right-wing Republicans who tore it apart immediately after. But in an attempt, I think, to hold on to one of his most loyal constituencies for the Democratic Party, the LGBT community, he said lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. He and using the word transgender for the first time in a State of the Union message, and that's no small thing. And lesbian and bisexual, for that matter. Yes. And he referred to same-sex marriage as a civil right, which he said, was also good. He said, I've seen something like gay marriage go from a wedge issue used to drive us apart to a story of freedom across our country, a civil right now uh, legal in states that seven uh, in ten Americans call home. I, I thought it was an elegant phrasing of the whole thing. Uh, and, and he also He's been reading Rex Wachner's <laughs> statistical analysis. <laughs> Congratulations, Rex. You That's made right. the State of the Union. Uh, he also didn't get booed or called a liar when he said these things. Yeah, so. people stood, the Democrats at least stood up. And, yes. uh, yeah. It, it was shows very that, I thought it was very, and not just for the gay stuff, I thought it was very moving. It was. A very moving speech. And, I, you know, we, we always talk about his flaws and policy and, you know, what he really needs to be doing to get, you know, wealth inequality down and all those kinds of things. And I'm not sure all that's going to happen. I'm just saying it was a good speech. Uh, sure. It was a great speech, but so what in the end? <laughs> uh, wow. They have all these guests that the president invites and puts in the box with uh, Michelle and Mrs. Biden, and there were a lot of them this time, but no uh, overtly gay ones. But Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the congresswoman from Florida. Head of the Democratic Party. I was about to say that, yes. Uh, did have the second gay married couple from Florida as her guests in the balcony. 
I'm telling you, it's the Democratic Party reaching out to us to hold on to our votes in 2016. Not just I'm fine with that. Not just holding on to gay votes, but being out there for gay stuff is a way to show more progressive people that you're progressive. That's how Andrew Cuomo gets away with it, because he's fairly conservative, our governor here in New York. And but he's for same, so he got it, same-sex marriage done. Of course, all the talk now is how the Republicans will handle these issues in 2016. Well, and uh, I say, because they didn't boo or yell at him when he said this, it's uh, another small piece of evidence that they may be well, lying low on this. We have seen Republican candidates retreat in tone, like the way the Pope has retreated in tone. We'll get to him later because he stepped it up this Some week. Some of them. He t stepped it up this week. But will unexpected members of the Supreme Court retreat in tone as we move in now to the big news of the week and the big case coming up because last Friday as we are taping on Wednesday the Supreme Court announced that they will take the cases from the Sixth Circuit uh, raising the question uh, possibly of whether same-sex marriage should be legal across the United States. Now, I know uh, one of you wrote to me this week and said, when we start talking about circuits, your eyes glaze over. Uh, so we're going to try to take this slow and put it together. But first, we're going to show you a map of what the justices were looking at in terms of a map of the United States when it comes to the issue of same-sex marriage. Where are we now? It's the reddish map. There it is. All that red area are states, which is, seven, as the president said, uh, seven out of ten Americans can now get same-sex married, uh, where pe people can get legally married in their states. There's a, still a couple of disputes going on in some of them, and there are some hatched areas that show we've gotten some good decisions there in the in the uh, otherwise white areas. And the uh, uh, so you know this is what they're looking at, uh, very similar to uh, where they where we were on interracial marriage and on. Um, uh, uh, sodom, uh, sodomy in terms of the number of states that are still outstanding that haven't gotten with the program. And when they get to this moment, uh, that, that is when the Supreme Court usually is ready to say, okay, the whole country. Well, and in fact, public opinion is a lot higher for same-sex marriage than it was for uh, interracial marriage. Higher. when they 70 percent of Americans were against uh, um, uh, interracial marriage. In, exactly. In, uh, but now we've got what? What is the figure now for American polling on same-sex marriage? It's it's well it's, over 50 percent. Uh, it's uh, at 60 most of the time. Right. Uh, so that's a good thing and you don't see revolutions happening in the states where it is legal although you do see some pushback on things like religious freedom yes. bills and stuff so, in so let's go to the in, second in, map yes you explain the second map please because right. you're good at this the United States of America second map, second second map, map the circuits map, circuits map. there, there we, we go the United States of America is divided into what are known as judicial circuits for purposes of the legal system in this country, the federal legal system. You can see that there are 11 there, plus the District of Columbia, which is its own circuit, yes. because it, a lot of special cases and are they're, heard there. They are numbered. You can see big numbers on this map. And the. Do you know what your number is? <laughs> Our number is two. We are in the second circuit. Yeah. But for purposes of the Supreme Court case that was taken on Friday. It's it, the gray area. The Sixth Circuit. <laughs> or Michigan, ten. Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. You, you see it there? Uh, you right may there remember in the you may remember a few years a few months ago, a judge there decided that same-sex marriage was not required to be legalized in that circuit. Well, not yes, and the and the uh, and the appeals at the circuit uh, that voted two to one against uh, same-sex yes. marriage. Essentially, now this judge, by the way, relied heavily on the Baker v. Nelson decision from Minnesota in 1972. What, what is that? It because was, you're going to hear a lot about Baker again. It was a same-sex couple who sued for marriage rights in Minnesota in 1972, and the Supreme Court said there's a, this isn't even a real issue, and we're not even going to hear it, and in don't modern, be ridiculous. Yeah, in modern times, uh, the way the court deals with that is they just don't take the case. Right. And you don't hear anything about it, and they don't give any reason. Because in, tho in those days, they actually said, for want of a federal issue, we're not deciding this case because they'd been turned down at the lower level. 
in fact, in these cases, in the Sixth Circuit, all these states had decisions that legalized same-sex marriage at the state yes. level, and the states appealed and went to the federal judges at the Sixth Circuit, and the Sixth Circuit judges said, Ah, sorry, we're going to overturn all those state decisions. You don't have to legalize same-sex marriage in these states. Now, every other circuit that had decided had ended up saying, yes, you do have to. So the Supreme Court had let those decisions stand. Yes. But when we appealed the Sixth Circuit to the Supreme Court and said, this is, you know, this is crazy, this is wrong, the, Sixth, the Supreme Court has now said, okay, we will take this case. Yes. So the assumption is that they're taking this case because they want to establish a national standard and because they haven't taken the other cases where le marriage became legal, the assumption is they will go ahead and tell the Sixth Circuit and the entire country that they must legalize right. same-sex marriage across the board. Uh, the, as Chris Geidner, the uh, good gay journalist, has pointed out, uh, the decisions in the past 15 weeks have made the coming ruling practically preordained. Um, uh, it, because of all the action that's already been taken, allowing these same-sex marriages to go forward in all these states, uh, but the Supreme Court has let them go forward, it makes it seem less radical to take the next step. Uh, it also makes it seem unlikely that they would rule against those legal marriages. There's certainly been speculation that the conservatives want to stop same-sex marriage. There's been talk that Justice Kennedy, who has been the deciding vote on the Lawrence v. Texas sodomy case, the Romer v. Evans Colorado Amendment 2 case, the uh, DOMA case uh, a year and a half ago, Windsor. Uh, that his decisions have talked about states' rights and that therefore maybe we're on shaky ground with him on this, that he would potentially say that states are allowed to legalize same-sex marriage but not required to. Well, they've always been allowed to. The, the, the federal government never stopped them from doing it. I mean, even in DOMA. Exactly. But the Supreme Court could say that is, in fact, the case. You are allowed to, but you are not required to. Well, let's summarize uh, what, what the justices have put before the uh, plaintiffs and the defendants here. Uh, they've consolidated all these cases from the Sixth Circuit. And uh, here are the two questions they put to everybody. Does the, we're going to talk about it, does the 14th Amendment require a state to license a marriage between two people of the same sex? That's one question. The other one, does the 14th Amendment require a state to recognize a marriage between two people of the same sex when their marriage was lawfully licensed and performed out of state? Those are the two questions before the judges. They're going to, uh, by, um, just to give you uh, the timing on it, uh, they're, um, the, 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 out, the, our side has to get its petitions in by February 27th. Their side has to get them in by March 27th. And uh, the uh, uh, re reply br briefs are due on April 17th. And then they expect the, uh, the actual arguments before the court to happen late April. There's a couple of days in April which seem to be fit for this. And then we get a decision, usually by the end of June, but they can sometimes extend themselves if they want to. Right. So that's where we are on this. Uh, now, uh, They're going to, they've already allotted the time for oral arguments on these questions, 90 minutes on whether the 14th Amendment requires a state to legalize same-sex marriage, and an hour on uh, whether a state must recognize legal marriages performed elsewhere. So let's look at the 14th Amendment, which has been proposed as the question here. The 14th Amendment, if you are reading your screen, we'll leave off the... First sentence. Yeah. No state shall make or enforce any law which will abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state de deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So, it's the due process clause that you've always heard about and the equal protection clause that you've always heard about. Now, there's uh, some, when this was written, these questions were proposed, some people stepped forward and said, wait a minute, these questions are kind of backwards. Shouldn't the question be, 
given that marriage exists in the United States and has been declared a fundamental right in previous Supreme Court cases, should same-sex couples be deprived of that right yeah. as an equal protection right? And some are concerned that, in fact, Chief Justice Roberts has written the questions these way, this way because he wants to narrow the possible decisions and make it turn out to be a state's rights issue. Well, Robert Hayson, who's a law professor at the University of California, Irvine, said he didn't like the phrasing of the questions before the court, and he thinks this court has stacked the deck against gay marriage in the way that it's framed it. On the other hand, Lawrence Tribe said uh, the court's order represents good housekeeping. Um, it does technically leave open a middle path uh, along which the court uh, would prevent states from discriminating against same-sex couples lawfully married in their home states without requiring any state to take the affirmative action of issuing its own marriage licenses. So, yes, is it possible that that could happen? It's possible. So, so it, 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 unlikely, but possible. I would agree. Unlikely, but possible. This is what uh, I've been raising as a potential issue for a long time now that they could pick this path where states have the right to make their own decisions and that's entirely up to them. But I mean, but, if, they, if they went that way, if they said, you've got to recognize these marriages from other states, uh, people can just go to other states and get married, then they have to be recognized in the home states. It's silly. We had that going on in New York for a long time here. Uh, Edie Windsor was one of the people who went to Canada and got married. New York recognized her marriage even though they wouldn't do same-sex marriages. And it raises all sorts of questions about the these benefit, federal benefits and stuff too, even though supposedly if they're recognized in the state, even if they weren't married there, that should solve it, but it may or may not. But I think more importantly, all these other federal courts have found the fundamental right to marriage for same-sex couples. So it seems unlikely that the Supreme Court would throw a monkey wrench into that. It's one thing to say the states have a right to legalize same-sex marriage, say by a vote or of the legislature or of the people, but what do you do when a federal court has legalized same-sex marriage if the Supreme Court now says that in fact you don't have to? Now, if the Supreme Court says you don't have to do this, Th those lower court rulings, some of them still stand. They have to be challenged within the circuit, within yep. the state, et yep. cetera, if people are going to win back the right to stop us from getting married. It would be and a mess. It would be a mess. And uh, um, most people think, I mean, again, these are all the potentialities here, uh, that if you were already married, you'd still be married. They haven't unmarried people in a long time. No, they haven't. And in fact, they just found in Michigan that 300 couples that were married between the legalizing of marriage and the time it was put on hold and in fact overruled by the Sixth Circuit, those 300 couples are legally married. Some speculate that Roberts is trying to control this situation by narrowing the questions he asked in the case and that he may be inclined to vote for some form of marriage legalization but putting himself in the majority so he can write the decision and keep it very narrow, which in fact is what he did in the Obamacare case. Yes. He ended up saying Obamacare was legal, but he did it on a basis that really did not talk about uh, the right to health care. And so it was a very screwy decision that is going to hurt us down the road. And he could screw this up. And as long as you brought that up about Obamacare, there's another Obamacare case before the court based on the, the way the law was sloppily written. I don't have to get into the details, but there's a good chance that the court may overturn uh, parts of Obamacare because of this. Exactly. And, uh, and but the, some people say because of the way the court cares about the way it's perceived, it could give us the marriage thing to make the sh so that they don't look like ogres while they take away health care rights at the same time. They're, I'm not they're, sure they're... Some of this is in the head yeah, of these I, judges. I, yeah, I'm not sure they do the trade-offs quite that way. We're not sure of anything. Well, I would, I would predict there are two possible outcomes here. One, a 5-4 decision as we have seen in other LGBT cases with uh, Kennedy in the majority with the liberals legalizing same-sex marriage nationally and completely. 
The other possibility is a 7-2 decision where Roberts and Alito join the Kennedy and the liberals to write a somehow more narrow decision. Right. One hint of this is that when cases were proposed to the Supreme Court uh, that they refused to take, you know, lifting stays uh, or keeping stays, only Scalia and Thomas were in favor of imposing stays or keeping stays. And so people are reading that tea leaf and saying, ah, Roberts and Alito are up for grabs right. on this. The other big this question. This is really, yes. really too yes. much. The other big question to pay attention to, folks, is what rationale are they going to use to grant us the right to same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, if, they, if they make a very broad ruling and they say things uh, like, uh, you know, gay people are, are a suspect class, are entitled to heightened scrutiny, and that's why we're doing this, uh, which some courts have said, uh, the Sus Ninth Circuit. Suspect class is actually shorthand for discrimination against yeah. gay people is automatically suspect and therefore you have to yes. really justify any laws that discriminate against if gay people. If we won that in the context of a Supreme Court decision, it would be somewhat of a, uh, um, you know, a, 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 an anti-discrimination law almost that we've won with uh, through the courts. Uh, it would mean any time a gay case comes before the, because for a judge, they have to look at it much more closely than they mm -hmm. would have before and uh, make an assumption that uh, there may have been discrimination here and uh, watch out for that. So but, that's about the level of scrutiny. But in all these good decisions that uh, Justice Kennedy has written for us, he mm -hmm. hasn't gone that far in those decisions. Um, well, he's done what's considered a sort of intermediate level between the lowest level of scrutiny and the intermediate level of scrutiny. He's sort of halfway between there. Yeah. And people are worried that uh, the way the decision is written could then provide a rationale to legalize polygamy or adultery or incest. So people are scared oh, that boy. that will get in the way. And the other question is whether they will look to find animus as a motivation for the passing of anti-gay laws. And, and, and animus how does play. not, you know, does not mean sort of straight-out hatred. Uh, you know, snarling and foaming at the mouth. Uh, but it just means prejudice to some extent against disapproval. Yes. Sure. Uh, of course, the most interesting or amusing footnote to all of this was the American Family Association saying that Justices Kagan and Ginsburg should recuse themselves from this case because they have performed same-sex marriages. So. Uh, we, of course, came back with, well, given what Scalia and Thomas have said about gay people over the years, they could be asked to recuse themselves, too, because clearly they have a preconceived notion. Moral disapproval. Yeah. So that's it. So that uh, that sets it up, folks. Uh, so we're not, we're, if, if, uh, I, I am a betting. We hope. I am a betting person, and uh, I'm willing to bet on a, on a, a positive outcome here uh, in full. Uh, but it's it's not. Nothing is a sure thing. And I'm not willing to and bet Ruth against it. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg it. has to stay alive. <laughs> I'm not it's willing true. to bet against it, so we're not going to have one of our traditional uh, okay. on-air bets. But uh, also, in North Dakota, a federal judge put that whole case on hold pending this Supreme Court case. And some said, well, you know, other states aren't on hold. They went ahead and legalized same-sex marriage. Florida, before they even got a decision at the right. 11th Circuit, went ahead and legalized same-sex marriage, and the Supreme Court said that was okay. So why are we waiting in North Dakota? So I just want to ask a question of you all. I mean, you got that circuit thing down now? You understand it? <laughs> there will be a quiz next week. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> well, there's that scene in Selma where uh, um, Oprah Winfrey is playing a, a health aide, and she's just an, you know, an average citizen of Selma, and she wants to register to vote, and they say, uh, okay, you have to pass the test first. You know how many how many how many courts are there in in in, uh, in the state? And she says sixty seven. And, uh, and and name the judges is what she's <laughs> asked to next. And she goes, you know, it's 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 heartbreaking to watch. Yes. And, but she's resigned to it because she knows he's going to get crap like that because they just did everything they could to stop you from voting. And this is in our lifetimes, folks. Well, and in our, our present lifetime. day lifetimes, the Mormons are going to excommunicate John Dalen, the creator of 
the Mormon Stories website and podcast. He was but, asking for it. Well, he, he said he was in favor of same-sex marriage and women priests, and I guess that gets you excommunicated. I have, been, I have been asking for excommunication for a long time, but it's very difficult from the Catholic Church. I hereby excommunicate uh, you. You can't do it. <laughs> you can marry, but she can marry people. Uh, well, not sorry. legally. Whoops. I have done it several times. All right. Uh, Never and again. By the way, in Oklahoma, They've, there have been 3,200 same-sex marriages since it was uh, legalized on October the 6th, but it's just 23 of 77 counties that have uh, seen, been the scenes of same-sex marriages. Well, meanwhile, in Colorado, we do have Ooh. another cake controversy as we segue into related but other news. A clever right winger went into a. I don't know how clever he is. Well, he thinks he's clever. I was putting sort of air quotes in my voice. Okay. Went into a bakery and asked that a bakery that had made public statements in favor of the LGBT community this when is, the other yeah. thing came up. This is the As You Car Bakery, A Z U K A R Bakery. And so, first of all, he inquired about a Bible-shaped cake. Yes. And they said, sure, we make Bible-shaped cakes. Uh, mm -hmm. Happy to do it. Uh, but then, uh, now again, he handed them a piece of paper, and they didn't report exactly what it said, but it said something along the line of God hates gays, about a scene with two, two male yeah, hands. Yeah, I don't think a, it said gays. Ex well, I know, I'm just saying. A slur. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But it had words like detestable, disgrace, sinners in it she the woman remembers that so the baker said look i'll bake the bible cake and i'll but i'll and i'll sell him the stuff to do his decorating himself uh, because i don't want to write down discriminatory language the, the so this guy is suing uh for discrimination uh before the state department of uh, regulatory agencies and um she says i never refused him service I was just trying to negotiate with him over how we're going to handle this. So is this the same as uh, a gay couple coming in and saying we want a gay wedding cake and the baker saying that is a violation of my First Amendment rights, I don't want to send that message? Probably not, but it's a gray area because it has been established legally that you are allowed to, printers for instance, yes. are allowed to not print messages that they find. Pornography. Yes. They don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. Right. But that's not discrimination on the basis of race, religion, color, sexual orientation, religion. Exactly. This guy says it is, this is uh, against f my religion. But in fact, uh, he would have to prove that that is what his religion says, and many other members of his denomination, I'm sure, would say differently. Yes. So it is his specific well, they message might, they might that say, is being. Uh, well, we don't like same sex, but we wouldn't quite put it that way. <laughs> Well, it'll be interesting to see what the state human rights division says. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's, there's a difference between discriminating against a whole group of people who want the same thing that straight people want, and writing a discriminatory message. But, and but I know dicey. there are people. I know there are people in my own community who disagree with me on this. Maybe we should just go ahead and make those cakes. Make the cakes. Make make the discriminatory. Sure. Nazi cakes. You know? Yeah, well, in fact, people have been ruled as not having to make Nazi cakes. Is that discriminating against, it's not discriminating against a protected group? There are very, there are very few places that protect you on the basis of your political belief, but there are some. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, in other religious news, the Pope is coming to America mm -mm. in September. He was already scheduled to come to Philadelphia for a while, and he is going to go to, I'm sorry to say this, Washington, D.C., and address a session of Congress. Oh, good grief. Well, uh, I wonder, I, <laughs> now, of course, when he, speak, uh, when he speaks about economic justice issues, I don't imagine the Republicans will be on their feet for that. Uh, and, he's, and he's been good on that. Yes, he has. But, uh, of course. And, I, and that is why he's coming. And he's coming to New York City for a U.N. session, which on, is also going to address. On climate change. Is it? Yeah, it's environment. Okay. Yeah. I thought it had something to do with economics, Maybe. too. 
Probably does. But the question is, will he go to St. Patrick's Cathedral? Will he visit the World Trade Center site? Will he stage a mass at Madison Square Garden? Let me just say, unless he changes his tune, not his tone, because his tone's nice mm -hmm. most of the time, and if he doesn't change his tune, I'll be out there protesting. And well, the, of course, let's bring up what he said this week. Yes. He was in the Philippines. He affirmed church teaching on contraceptives. I mean, come on. But I, don't conceive like rabbits. Yeah, I mean, and then he says that. So he's basically saying, and, and, which means that instead of using the wonderful, you know, medicine that has been developed to, to help, help uh, uh, people not conceive, uh, you've got to rely on the rhythm method. Yep. And anyway, so then he said, the family is, quote, the family is threatened by growing efforts on the part of some, especially on the Gay USA show, he actually didn't say that, <laughs> to redefine the very institution of marriage by relativism, uh, by the culture of the ephemeral, by a lack of openness to life. Well, screw you. I mean, our couples have kids too and do other things and, and our relationships are life-giving in many, certainly to us and to our friends and all that kind of stuff. So you don't know what you're talking about. Those are very hateful words. Well, he talked about us as practicing ideological colonization and seeking to destroy the family. I will say that you, know, you read a lot of these statements by the Pope, they do speak in a kind of a code, although this one was fairly direct, but a Vatican spokesperson confirmed to John Allen, the uh, journalist over there, that he was attacking uh, gay marriage. <laughs> and he doesn't, uh, uh, you know, this is the Pope who says we shouldn't uh, ridicule religion. Uh, uh, all right, I won't make fun of it, but uh, I'll just condemn the bigotry in religion, including yours. And more locally, in Dallas, a billboard company president has taken down a billboard advertising reparative therapy, saying he was misled by the pastor who was offering it, who told him it was about couples counseling uh, rather than converting people from homosexuality. Well, as so long as thank we, you to the billboard As company. long as we're talking about the Pope, I want maybe what triggered all this for him, the triggering event, was Michael Sam, the uh, uh, football player who's out gay, <laughs> uh, proposing to his uh, uh, partner, what's his partner's name again? Come on. Uh, Vito Camisano. There he is. Uh, where is that, folks? It's on top of the Vatican. What a provocation. That's terrific. They were having a nice vacation, and uh, they proposed, and they're going to get hitched. And I'm glad uh, that he did it in such an out and open way. Yes. But we're not so happy with the Reverend Bryant White of Marietta, Georgia, who was invited to open a session of the legislature there in Atlanta with a prayer. Uh, 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 Tradition, I'm not fond They got of. a chaplain in the Senate and the House. Of course. So his opening prayer was anti-gay explicitly and pro-religious liberty. He's supporting the religious liberty. Well, the group Georgia Equality there has formed an, a, a new coalition called Georgia Unites to defeat this quote-unquote religious freedom bill, which is essentially a license to discriminate. Michigan's getting one, a religious uh, freedom law, you know, that kind yes, of stuff. Yes, although the Governor Snyder there, who is a conservative Republican in his state of the state message, said that we should keep discussing expanding the civil rights law. We defeated it this year, but let's keep talking about well, it. Well, I mean, Idaho is getting a non-discrimination bill uh, uh, having a first hearing this week. Now, didn't, well, Butch Otter, great. didn't Butch Otter say, you know, I'm not for this marriage stuff, but I could go for the civil rights stuff? Maybe. The thing in Idaho is that they've had that series of demonstrations at the legislature and, for a long time. And four words, I think it's yes. called. Yes. And many civil disobedience arrests and it's paying off. The legislature is now holding the hearing. Now, whether they'll get anywhere with it immediately, who yes. knows? But it's a great example of the uh, and, usefulness of civil disobedience. And the four words are, I love gays too. No, actually it's <laughs> sexual orientation and gender identity. Added to the human rights laws. Yes. Now, of course, in Starks, Starkville, Mississippi, mm. they repealed in secret the non-discrimination statement there. The mayor 
vetoed that repeal, but the repeal is overridden, and they had a big demonstration there against that, activists coming out, and they had a demonstration in Rankin City, Mississippi, over the school board's denial of a gay-straight alliance. So the nice thing is citizen action in these two cases in Mississippi and all over. Absolutely. That is what helps. In New York City, uh, uh, I reported in November that they were opening up a transgender unit, housing unit. Now this is for transgender women who have not had uh, gender reassignment surgery, okay? At Rikers Island. Yes, on Rikers Island prison. And, uh, and throughout the, uh, uh, you know, serving the, the entire system there. Um, and all of a sudden I hear from Kate Barnhart, who I work with at New Alternatives for Homeless LGBT Youth, that two of her clients went to Rikers, asked to be in the, tra the new unit for safety, and were told it wasn't open. This went on for, it was supposed to open right in, right in November. Uh, so they hadn't opened it. In the, so in this interim period, these two uh, transgender women get raped in while they're in custody. They complain about it, what do they do with them? They just shift them around, uh, the guards call them names, call them by, call them Mr., uh, humiliate them. So obviously they haven't trained the staff. Uh, so after all this hubbub, well, they finally opened up the unit on January the 15th, and it is a refuge, going to be a refuge for some people. Uh, not all transgender women want to go there, uh, mm -hmm. who have, you know, but um, they've really got to get the staff trained on this thing. Well, you are very optimistic if you think uh, Rikers is going to be seriously reformed. Council member so. Danny Drum, out gay, said it's a hellhole. Yeah. And you are moderating a panel discussion on homeless youth, a forum at the LGBT Community Center here in New York, on Wednesday the 28th at 8 p.m., uh, 208 West 13th Street. That's going to be that's going to be most of the uh, leaders of the groups that serve homeless LGBT youth, and we'll see. You know, this is becoming a people are more focused on this now that we're winning on some of these other civil rights issues. Yeah, winning. A Louisville, Kentucky high school adopted a trans-friendly bathroom policy, and a Kentucky senator senator wants to overturn that and institute some law about biologically defined bathrooms. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, the state you said again Kentucky. was? Kentucky. Yes, and uh, he, he, the schools would get charged $2,500 in damages if a student reports that they were subjected to this, And but he's trying to rewrite the bill now because he thinks some of the kids are going to want that money, <laughs> that they'll stage incidents and say, hey, come on, you go in there yeah. and we'll, we'll get the dough. <laughs> Uh, better news from Pennsylvania, where the newly elected Democratic Governor Tom Wolf has appointed transgender woman, uh, female doctor Rachel Levine as physician general for the state. Hmm. Uh, this follows Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe making transgender Dr. Marissa Levine the interim health commissioner there. This is a trend. Right. Uh, in New York, uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo has named out gay Alfonso David, we have a picture of him there, as his uh, counsel. Now, he's been with Cuomo since his attorney general days. He worked very hard on the marriage bill, and he used to work with Lambda Legal. And, of course, he was a guest on this show once, which is usually how you get these jobs. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luckily, no one knows. Cuomo, so also named, Cuomo also named former city council speaker Christine Quinn, out lesbian, as a senior advisor. But she's going to be part-time until she finishes a gig at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government where she's a resident fellow teaching. Well, as long as we're oh, talking about oh. teaching politics, as Senator Lindsey Graham, I cannot miss this. Senator Lindsey Graham, one of the most famous closet cases in the United States Senate, and I think he's being pushed as a joke by uh, John McCain. I think this is John McCain's way of being, entertaining himself. Being cruel to Lindsey? <laughs> yes. They're, they're buddies. Go on, go on, Lindsey, run for president. Are they still buddies? <laughs> Absolutely. Still McCain is touting his candidacy. You know, uh, uh, no one knows more about foreign policy than Lindsey Graham. Lindsey is very uh, rude to the President of the United States. He comes on television, he makes very uh, outlandish statements. I mean, yeah. I, 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 we criticize the President here. In what one of his wildest dreams does he think there is any point to him exploring a run for the presidency? And does hey. this mean that we have reached the gay millennium 
that such a notorious well, closet case well, can step forward well, to run for president. Well, let me let me uh, disagree with you a little there because back in <laughs> I think it was 2008, uh, they elected a black president of the United States. <laughs> did you? Ever, he was did not think closeted it was, about it. Did you think that you were going to see that in your lifetime, folks? I did not, but I don't think I will see Lindsey Graham as president in my lifetime either. Well. I like what they did in West Hollywood because I've been pushing for it in, uh, here in New York, but I guess not hard enough. Uh, restrooms, if you're a single serve restroom in West Hollywood now, it's basically got to be unisex. And that's what they should have here at MNN. I've, I've suggested it to them. But all across the city, it makes it easier for everybody. It's not just for transgender folks, but it certainly makes it easier on them. But it's for everybody so that if one of the restrooms is open, you can go use it. You don't have to worry about whether you're a man or a woman or somewhere uh, in between. All right, uh, Williamsburg, New York City, Brooklyn, December 14th, a 36-year-old man was attacked with gay slurs. Uh, his nose was broken, cuts, Ugh. bruises. The attacker, they have the attacker on video in a pizzeria a few minutes before. He left the pizzeria, got in his car, drove a few blocks, saw this guy on the street, stopped, got out of his car, and beat the you know what out of this guy. Well, I, I hate really. To, I hate to say it, but we're probably going to see more, uh, a flurry of incidents as we make so much progress. It's always been attendant to it, sadly, because uh, people don't give up without a fight. In North Philadelphia, lesbian Kim Jones, 56, a program director at a local youth agency, described as a crucial, wonderful worker at the at the agency, assassinated by a gunman at a bus stop, who walked up behind her and killed her for no known reason. She was well known in the community as an out lesbian. She was married to her partner. She had a master's degree. She was a, an incredibly important member of the community and just killed in broad daylight. Uh, in Rochester, New York, domestic violence, uh, lesbian Kendra Keels, 20 years old, killed by her girlfriend, Sharita Crumpler, 31. Domestic violence cases happen in our community as everywhere. And we mourn the death of John Evans, who was the founder of Love in Action, one of the first ex-gay organizations. But after a couple of years, his best friend had killed himself, his lover had died in despair and drug use, and he said, you know, this is not right. I am changing. He renounced the ex-gay life and campaigned against it for the rest of his life. He died of heart failure. Yeah, I, I saw a play this week called A Quiet Sip of Coffee by my friend uh, Anthony Johnston and Nathan Schwartz. And it's about them when they were kids about 10 years ago. They're 30 now. Mm -hmm. uh, going to a, uh, proposing to a gay conversion center uh, that they write a play and get some money from them and things. They said, okay, fine, come and take our course for two weeks. And it's about that. It is a terrific play. It's, a, you know, this was a limited run, but I hope if it comes back, you check out A Quiet Sip of Coffee. All right, let's hopscotch through international well, news. Well, in, in Russia, uh, the, uh, the thing about the transgenders not being able to get licenses, well, they're backtracking. Driver's licenses. They're, they're, they're backtracking on that now, yeah. saying they've really got to be severely mentally uh, ill and a psychiatrist has to certify it. Don't worry about it. But it's still in the code. So it is of concern. But they say they're going based on the World Health Organization, and the health, World Health Organization is going to remove transgender from some list, so maybe that will help. Well, we will be demonstrating against Russia and its anti-LGBT policies and all its other sins next Monday at the Metropolitan Opera, where Valery Gergiev, the conductor, and Anna Netrebko, the soprano, both big Putin supporters, will be performing yet again. So at 7 p.m. on Monday at the Metropolitan Opera at Lincoln Center, you can join Queer Nation, uh, Rusa, the Russian USA group, and Ukrainians who are mad at Russia yes. will all be out there demonstrating. Be there. And also in Russia, the British director, Peter Greenaway, he's making a second film on Soviet director Sergei Art Eisenstein. And he needs the cooperation and funding from the Russian Film Fund, whose head has said that the scripts uh, dealing with Eisenstein's homosexuality just does not suit us, and they're threatening to cut off the phones and uh, the funds and not uh, cooperate with the film. 
Monday, Lincoln Center, yeah. 7 p.m. Better news from Thailand, which is writing a new constitution, which will mention and protect third gender people. I, I, was, I, I was heartened to, re, to see, and we have a picture of this guy, that the health minister of Ireland came out, Leo Varadkar. Uh, he, uh, he came out publicly for the first time. He's 36 years old. He's the first that level of minister that has come out. We've never had a gay cabinet member in the United States. So it's all very nice. And he gave a radio interview about it. Uh, but I then subsequently hear that last year, he was telling other ministers, oh, you shouldn't boycott the St. Patrick's Day parade in New York because it discriminates against gay groups. And so, so I'm not so uh, thinking that this guy is so progressive. Uh, more progressive is the member of parliament in Ireland, Dominic Hannigan, who announced that he had married his male partner in London and has come back to campaign for the marriage referendum coming up soon in and the spring. And the polling on that referendum in Ireland on marriage, it's coming up in May, 71% uh, yes, 17% no, 9% don't know. I know you don't like these polls that much, but you think that's, we're going to win. Well, that's, pretty... that, that's the best one I've heard for a while. Yeah. But we buried the headline. The male couple in Mexico finally got married. <laughs> and they weren't expecting to. They showed up with about 500 people to demonstrate at the city hall in Mexicali. And the officials said, oh, come on in. We'll marry you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because... Uh, the head of the Diversity Council in Mexico had threatened to out government officials, politicians, Catholic priests, if they did not let this marriage go through. And the mayor of Mexicali set up such insane roadblocks to this that he may be subject to prosecution. Yes. And then in Tijuana, Mayor Jorge Astiazanan, yep, uh, Orsi, uh, says gay couples can marry there. In Tijuana, he said, there is openness to everyone. And as the couple were marrying in Mexicali, two other couples were married in other states of Mexico. They're making progress at about the same rate we are. And I they're think. making progress in Thailand. The constitution there uh, will, if it goes the way it's, they've written it, will recognize a third gender to ensure fairer legal treatment for transgender and gay people. Uh, this constitution is being prepared by a group picked by the military. <laughs> <laughs> but the spokesperson there said, there are not only men and women, we need to protect all sexes. We consider all sexes to be equal. Also, by the time you hear this in Chile, they may have finally given approval to civil unions for both gay and straight couples. They, the Senate had already passed it. The Chamber of Deputies just passed it. They're reconciling the two versions, and that's expected to go through. Israel, but in, yeah, Israel, I'm sorry. in Macedonia, yeah. they have just passed a law limiting marriage to men to male female couples and limiting only. the opportunity for civil unions the vote yeah. was 72 to 4 in israel citizens can now change their gender on their id cards without gender reassignment surgery uh, the health ministry will set the guidelines for recertification uh, and in egypt the government apparently has been behind the boost in the sensational anti-gay media stories calling up the papers and say write this to distract everybody from all the other problems in the country in belfast northern ireland a an ano anonymous couple married in england they have to be anonymous are suing for recognition of their marriage in England. Northern Ireland is the last part of, the, of Great Britain that does not have legal same-sex marriage. Jersey and Guernsey, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and in Manchester, England, they're going to open up a, an LGBT school for 40 kids, not unlike the Harvey Milk High School here. But uh, maybe not so uh, liberal in London. Uh, they, we got a poster for the show that I saw there called My Night with Reg, which is a gay AIDS play. Uh, yeah, there it is, as you see it. Uh, it's got the guy's got a bare bum, and then, of course there's nudity in the play. But they banned this poster from the subways, and uh, they're saying it didn't meet their standards. Although they do run the Justin Bieber enhanced crotch ad. Congratulations to transgender Jalel in uh, Tunisia, uh, uh, transgender male who went on television with sunglasses on to say on the show I have something to tell you to come out as trans as a transgender man in Tunisia on television okay 
Amazing. Uh, Austria has lifted adoption restrictions for yep. same-sex couples. The court said the distinction was unconstitutional. And the European Parliament has condemned Kyrgyzstan for its proposed anti-gay bill, which is even worse than the Russia bill. Okay, entertainment news. Uh, AIDS news. Oh, right, AIDS news, uh, sorry. New York State has introduced a bill to decriminalize syringe possession and improve access at pharmacies. I thought they did that years uh, ago. I do, too. And, uh, uh, Evidently It killed not. an awful lot of people not having that law. And controversy over the show looking where huh. they brought in discussion of an HIV positive character by referring to him as having a home in Virginia. HIV, get it? I had never heard that. Me either. And I'm the host of the co host of the Gay USA have show. have heard of that. All right, entertainment news. Oscar nominations out. Surprisingly little gay stuff. No case against date nominated in the documentary Thank category. Goodness. Imitation game uh, got the most or, uh, nominations for anything gay. That's about Alan Turing and Benedict Cumberbatch and was uh, nominated as best actor. Foxcatcher, which I haven't seen, so I can't tell you how explicitly gay it is, although the story was sort of gay. But what's Neil Patrick Harris going to do as the host with not a lot of gay stuff to talk uh, about? He'll find something. The president found something in his State of the Union. I saw the play. Are we up to this now? Yeah. No, yeah. I, well, it's out of, out of order. But, I mean, I saw the play Constellations on Broadway this week. This is by Nick Payne. It's an import from London. It's by Nick, uh, stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Ruth uh, Wilson, if you can get that picture up there, who won the Golden Globe for The Affair. It's a play that posits that time is an illusion and illustrates it through uh, the interaction of a couple getting together, falling apart, repeating their lines, undoing their lines. Uh, it got great notices, folks, but I have to say it had a soporific effect <laughs> on me. You could look that one up. Fans of Glee know that Coach Beast was originally brought on years ago as a sort of androgynous character. The joke was, was it a man or a woman? And then we grew to love Coach Beast as a sort of masculine woman. And the big thing this year now in the final season is that Coach Beast came out as trans 